Okay, today we're going to talk about types of sphygmomanometers, which that's a really big word. It's the medical term for blood pressure measurement devices. And I would like you to learn how to spell this word because uh, it's just one of those cool things to say that you know how to spell sphygmomanometer. So if you break it out and just do sphygmo and, you know, learn that part of the word, then it's just man o meters at the end. So if you just learn the S-P-H-Y, G-M-O, um, once you get that down, you should have that word under control. So practice it. Um, let's do a, a count on how many letters it actually is. One, Seventeen letters total, if, if it's plural. Okay, so we're gonna go to the next slide. Which is our very first type, it's the mercury model. This is more old school. You may have seen this at the doctor's office. And uh, I'm gonna show you a picture in a minute of what they look like. So hold on just a second, we'll get your book. A lot of times these are on the wall, or this is an old school one, it's, it's like in a little case. And that's the mercury model. Okay, it has a long column of mercury, and it's calibrated so that each mark represents two millimeters of mercury, and this is the symbol for mercury if you know your periodic table. Okay, so that's how we abbreviate it in medicine. It must be placed on a flat surface or wall mounted. And the level of mercury should be at zero when viewed at eye level. It's very important. If it's not, that means your um, measurement is going to be incorrect. So it's very important. It might be broken if it's uh, registering not at zero. It's the most accurate instrument for measuring blood pressure. So um, this just goes to show that sometimes the older ways are the most accurate. But OSHA discourages the use due to possible mercury spills and contamination because it does actually have mercury in it. So um, that's another reason they're kind of being phased out. Okay, we'll go on to the next. which is the aneroid. This is the one that has the dial that looks like a clock, and it is the type that you're gonna be using for manual blood pressure measurements. It also is calibrated in millimeters of mercury, and each line, again, represents two millimeters of mercury. When the cuff is deflated, the needle must be on zero, and do not use if the needle is not on zero, because then you will, again, have the inaccurate reading. I'm going to show you a couple of different types, uh, different sizes. So since people come in all different sizes, we have to have cuffs that come in all different sizes as well. So this is going to be the one that you're going to be using in class. It's the adult model, okay, the typical size for an adult. This would be a model like you would use either on a really large person or if you need to take a thigh blood pressure, or um, even lower like on the, on the calf of the body. So that could be another option. We also have a child model. You can see that's smaller than the adult. And then also for an infant, okay, a little tiny. And in the, actually in the neonatal intensive care, they would be even smaller than this. Okay. So those are just some examples of the aneroid. Okay, the last type of sphygmomanometer is our electronic model. Um, this is the one that is used in hospitals frequently. You're going to see them also in doctor's offices. Um, they are expensive. This classroom one that we have, 
when I purchased it a few years ago, it was $5,000, so the price is probably even more than that now. Um, it does have a digital readout, so it'll say the systolic and then the diastolic number. Um, the great thing about these, they're quick, they're easy, convenient, and they also often record the pulse and pulse oximetry reading, so it's kind of like one-stop shopping. Um, they might read out in odd numbers, like 101 over 73, for example, because it's not calibrated in the uh, every two millimeters of mercury. This is, um, you know, is designed to read out at these exact blood pressure. So that's why it might read in odd numbers. And it may not work if the patient has an irregular heart rate. Um, this kind of confuses the machine, um, and it will spit out an error, error code, um, so you're going to have to revert to taking the manual blood pressure for, on those patients. Okay, A lot of times the elderly patients or patients with um, atrial fibrillation might uh, not be able to have their blood pressure taken with the, with the digital. Um, again, a couple of different sizes of cuffs. You can see the difference between the large and the regular adult. So you just, you know, Unscrew this here and screw on the new cup size that you need. Um, but like I said, it is good to know how to use all the different types of um, spring manometers because you never know what type of setting you're going to be in, which one you're going to be um, required to use. So we do need to know all three of these methods.